Well, the Disney folks might call it the happiest place on earth, uh, but these days when you listen to CEO Bob Iger, particularly his reaction to Ron DeSantis and cracking down on Disney, he has an entirely different view, saying, among other things, does the state really want us to invest more, employ more people, and pay more taxes or not? Some have interpreted that as a sign that Disney could look at pulling out or pulling back in the Sunshine State in which it's a huge employer, about 75,000 strong. Charlie Gasparino has been following this back and forth drama, joins us right now. Charlie, this is getting nasty. <laughs> it is getting nasty. And, and, you know, bringing in Bob Iger over Bob Chapek, and people thought, you know, the rhetoric would calm down a little bit, but it's actually heated up. I mean, DeSantis really believes that Disney tried to pull a fast one on him. And just something with that new board, you know, the the the, um, the district, uh, the, self, the self-governing district, that it somehow was a plain dirty pool with the creation of that and keeping its people in place. So he's gone after him again. Here's the one problem that Disney has. Where are they going to move? Are they going to move literally back to California? They not only get hit with higher taxes, they're going to have to pay reparations. I mean, that is not a business-friendly state. Are they going to move to a red state? Well, if they're going to move to a red state and they pull this stuff, they're going to get the same treatment from Governor Abbott. Any of those low-tax low red states are going to, going to give him the same treatment. So I think, he's, I think they're kind of stuck there with each other. And, uh, you know, and I think when you dollars to donuts, if, you know, you're playing the long game, DeSantis has a better hand. His problem, DeSantis, is that people are getting sick of this question of, you know, battling with Bob Iger while he's, you know, thinking of running for president. They, they would like him to have a bigger sort of agenda, particularly his supporters that I know, some of his fundraisers, want, want him to talk about the economy, want him to get out in, in, ahead of Trump. They, you saw him on Trump on the uh, CNN um, debate last night. Uh, a lot of the supporters believe that there was a lot of places where DeSantis could hit Trump, where he fumbled through some answers, uh, didn't quite give the right answers to certain things. I mean, he left himself open last night, uh, and they would rather DeSantis start focusing on that than his continuing battle with Disney, because there's not a lot of real political, uh, you, know, um, you know, benefit you can get out of it. Now, he kind of, like, made his stance, and it's, it's you know, move on to the next political ploy. But if you're going to play long game, if he wasn't yeah. running for president, DeSantis has the upper hand. Easy here. I don't see. He's, he's, got, he's raised better than $110 million, so obviously something that yep. this could be seen as a distraction, but it's early on in the race. Charlie, thank you very much. Charlie Gasparino, Anytime. following all of that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.